Thank you everybody for coming out so early in the morning. Oh. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> everybody awake? Yes. Yeah. Good cool. for you. <laughs> Take a second, get comfortable. So I'm Billy. I'm Steven. Um, and we are uh, brothers. We've been working together for our entire lives, really. Um, Your entire life. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so the pro I mean, I guess we should probably talk a little bit more about the work before we get into this, uh, this slideshow. Um, we, we I'm, by trade, I'm a sculptor. I went to PAFA. Stephen went to PAFA, uh, Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Stephen's a printmaker. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also musicians. And I'm not much of a printmaker anymore. No, no. Um, That's what I... And I don't actually, it, I don't touch paper because I'm always dirty. I'm the sculptor. I'm the, he has the archives and stuff like that. So I never get to touch anything. He's the guy who keeps track of all that and does things on the computer. Um, but we've been work. <laughs> he put the slideshow together. <laughs> um, does things on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's special. Um, so yeah, we, we basically, we do a lot of installation and uh, sculpture and, and drawings and, and prints. And music. But a lot of it has, we, uh, the work tends to, um, we work with a lot of consumer culture. Uh, we, we look at objects in, the, in, in, our, in our built environment or uh, as far as, help me out here, Steve. Yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get got, warmed up. We've got no picture. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. You've okay. got the clicker too, you're on the. Okay, there you go. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, about ugly. We when we have when this prop, it's, it's kind of funny. We don't actually think about um, things as ugly. For yeah, the this is a funny one for us because I don't really know if ugly actually exists so much in terms of a. Does, he does. I mean, I think it does, but not in the obvious ways. Mm -hmm. And because there's so many different ways that ugly can be seen in a lot of its surface, a lot of and its there's so many people with different ideas about all these things that yeah. ugly so, for me is probably not for someone else. I'm sure that ugly for me is not ugly for definitely. someone else. Definitely. So, so um, show the yeah, right. We'll just get started with some of this. This is I, Stephen. You think this is ugly, right? I think it's cool, but yeah, I think it's ugly. Yeah, it's pretty I ugly. I mean, that's like, I think right now, in 2015, most people would be like, that's an ugly car. Yeah, definitely is. Five it's years from now, I don't know. Next year, I don't know. It's pretty putrid. But it's like, you know, it's, it's a thing, right? And it can look ugly. I'm, I'm sure like, everybody thought it was awesome when it came out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know. Hairless cats get a lot of flack. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it might warm up to you and then eventually if you get to hold it. It probably it still purrs like a normal cat. Yeah. Um, but that isn't if you ugly close cat, your eyes, right? maybe it's pretty. The owner will not say that. It's, you know, the owner loves that cat. Um, Super villains love yeah. that guy. So, I mean, there's certain, you can like, there's all these ugly things and like with, the, with an ugly cat, there's ugly animals. Like and this dude, what is that thing? Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, some of them, I mean, some of them are cute, but some of it, depending on who the person is, it really is like, it's subjective, it's not really. There's ugly food. If you get in there, you look at some of that. I mean, and how <laughs> things grow and stuff like that, it's kind of magical, but it's also really ugly and kind of putrid. And, and then objects and the things that like are just around that you can purchase, consume, whatever. I mean, there's some pretty ugly watches in here too. But I guess this is just to illustrate that like that green anything, watch at the top. Anything can kind of be ugly depending on who you ask, right? Um, <laughs> these these dudes are beautiful in in some way, but Mother, also nature. Nature yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Every time. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so now we're going to get a little bit more into some of the, I guess, like, thinking about it, it gets like, 
gets a little deeper than just what people think because it's also like what people do and how other people look at that. Um, I'm not that into this. <laughs> but that guy practices that and is really, really into it. Yeah. So who am I to say, really? And I mean, the, the amount of work and the amount of time at the cost of what it does to you in so many other residual ways, it, like, as if you read the list of what steroid use does and what, like, what it, what the rest of the life that isn't existing because that's what that guy is working for. I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. And I'm not going to say it's ugly. But no judgment. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, this guy is... No judgment. No, but it's, it's kind of scary, right? Halloween only comes one day a year. But, I mean, for him, that's, it's kind of... But this is like his totem animal. Like, this is, this is his life. This is what he's dedicated. Thousands of hours, thousands of dollars, probably more than thousands of dollars. And that's a serious amount of work. That's, you know, and to, to, to so many people, immediately, that is, that's kind of repulsive. It's frightening. Um, <laughs> this guy, hairless cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I had never seen these. Has Can anybody here seen these? Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. This is like this is this is a great uh, example of like this is just way beyond what they're really going for, which is like this perfection. That's it, it's a you know a, a type of beauty that is absolutely horrifying. Um, I think Ken got like over 250 different surgeries to make it like his pecs right, to get his face right. But it's like striving to this this idea, this this kind of um, a form convention, what it, whatever it is. It's it's not it's not real. It's based on something that is an image that's been perpetuated by by uh, popular culture. But they're going for it. They're like really going. I mean, I think it's almost, it's got to be beyond that. Like that level of commitment is. Yeah. It's almost, it's, some might say it's psychotic, but at the same time, it's kind of amazing. Let them have it. Yeah. I'm not going to say they're ugly, but a lot of people will. I know. Well, you know, you have to. You do it. Well, because, I mean, Michael's not ugly. And, but, I mean, he is horrifying. I mean, like, was, sorry. Um, and I, I feel like it's a good example because you can see who he was. And I think this is why, like, in, 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 our, in our culture, this is a great example of what, what went wrong. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily... Even, I don't even know if wrong is the in right this, thing. In this context. In, like, in a picture of, even, like, sex symbol 70s Michael, and then you have Michael. Um, you have something that's, re like, real far out, like... The context that gets Michael from there to there, I, I don't know. Like in a way, that's not what Michael's about. There's this huge contribution yeah. to our music that that's Michael, right? Huge contribution to our culture, and like as far as like people just writing it off because he kind of looks like a he looks like a monster, and some of the actions that he he he. Allegedly, I don't even want to say he looks like a monster. I just want to say he looks so unlike he used to yeah. that it makes it, it you know, for whatever it reason, yeah, it makes it really easy to make these weird associations to perpetuate that, Michael, that, that, and that's that's the ugly part of it. Yeah, not yeah. his face so much. There's, I mean, yeah. what that cracks open and gives people makes I feel like makes people feel like they can. Mm -hmm. Say what they say about yeah. Michael Jackson, yeah. despite having created some of the best music in the last whatever. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. okay, well, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, it's nasty. It's that's like that's part of somebody else's, you know, their that's their thing, right? Um, and this, uh, this, so this is this is actually some of our work, um, nicely done. Um, Do you like that? Yeah, you like that lineup? That one's good. That one's good. good. Um, 
but yeah, so it, it, this is like kind of one of the things that's fun to say when looking at this is like, uh, Stephen, it's your. This is totally your line. There are far too many. Um, what was it? How did you say it? I don't know what you're talking about. The the the, <laughs> the shoe. This the thing about like how many feet, how many shoes. There's far more shoes in the world. Then there, then there are, are feet. feet. Well, that's true. Yeah, There's yeah. way too many. There's way more. And it's shoes. like, no, and like everybody in here probably has to know somebody who has too many shoes and it's just one of those things it's it's well, another, and there's a dirty joke here too yeah yeah so like that's about another, big feet for us as artists that's one of the things that we actually we we like to investigate is this idea of excess and this is just another example of it i mean this is like that's pretty excessive to be rocking that kind of shoe like what are you, where are you going how do you drive with that how do you how do you like how do you drive how do you walk how, i can walk in do that do you see man. wait yeah. no there's let me like these dudes like, they got to stand a special way just to be able to stand together. Yeah. Like, watch it. Yeah. So I think, I mean, again. <laughs> like, watch out when you're backing up, man. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> and with, I, I think in the, in the day and age that we live in, we see it all the time, where, the, the, where you, you have an example of some sort of excessive. Well, the Ken and the Barbie thing is a weirder version of what this is, like, which is just <laughs> taking something way too far. Right, like exaggeration past the point of feasibility. Like no one wants feet that long, <laughs> because <laughs> for a thousand reasons. Mm -hmm. But it's emblematic of like other things that we actually all participate in, um, whether we're conscious of it or not. Ultimately, it gets around to ideas about waste, um, because that's all just extra. There's no use here. Um, so this, do you guys know, I mean, some of you will, but this is a, a pink insulation chair. Um, it's not actually, we don't recommend sitting in something like this. <laughs> um, it only it, looks comfortable. It's, it, well, and there's properties of this that actually are inviting. You it know, is it's, soft. It's, it, it's, it's able to be squishy and it can be tufted like upholstery. And I mean, if you were in a Tyvek suit and you jumped onto this, it actually would be very comfortable. But the idea behind it is it's, it's an illusion. It's not actually. And it will, if you get on it, totally irritate your skin and make it like a living, a living nightmare. Um, this this is what it makes me think of. As it does a lot. I actually, wait, this is a weird little anecdotal thing. I know a guy who, when he was little, um, his father was a contractor. And he ate the pink insulation because he thought it was cotton candy. Do you mean tasted? No, 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 no. Or he ate? ate it. Like, this isn't good cotton candy. What's going on? I yeah. just kept going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> Darwinism, don't fail me now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stomach pumped and everything, right? Right, <laughs> sir. Um, and that's what cotton candy can do to your teeth if you eat too much. It's a show about ugly. Come on. Um, you have to. That's a highly visible example of it. Um, so, yeah, I know it's, it's kind of funny because it's like cutesy funny, but it's also like it, it's, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty dark. Um, it's, we hope that Elmo never really does get skinned and turned into a purse, but... Um, it, it but you'd probably be able to get a really good price for the purse. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Just saying. I mean, well, and not for nothing, you know, a baby mink or a baby kitten or not, sorry, not a baby kitten, baby mink <laughs> or baby fox. That's like that is cute, well, and like that's gonna turn into a full-grown fox or a full-grown mink, and you just skin that and turn it into a. It, that's kind of horrific. I want a kitten. It's kind of ugly. Coat. It's not what you think. It's what a lot of people think. But this is, it's another unfortunate reality, I guess. You know, and we're just using this as an example to kind of illustrate it a little bit more. Uh, well, so here's the thing. If you just show the pile of dead animals, um, a lot of people just stop listening yeah. or stop paying attention out of just revulsion. Um, and that, that, So that, it's that, a harder way to talk about what killing that many animals for fashion is about. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you show Elmo, yeah. uh, you can actually get to some of the same subject matter without showing all the brutality. 
Well, you can have a conversation. You can show the ugliness it's, it's, through like showing something really cute. So one of the things that's funny about like, this idea of ugly is like, I mean, to a certain degree, I think ugly is it can be synonymous with humor in, in some degrees. And as artists, we often employ humor as a way to have that conversation and actually go beyond like the shut door or like the blinders immediately um, to get a little bit to have access to whatever that subject is that we're, we're talking about. Um, Cause, you know, the, ugly, the ugly thing there being the things that no one wants to talk about or acknowledge, right? So they're hard. I mean, there's plenty of stuff in, 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 in our lives that are hard issues to talk about. And, and there's plenty of really loud voices talking very aggressively about mm -hmm. tiny parts of things yeah. and never the whole thing. So, I mean, Elmo, I heard a lot of you guys like giggle a little bit. Um, uh, I, I didn't hear anybody. A, I an, uh, oh, yeah, right. Okay, so whatever. It was a reaction. This one just, it was like, damn, that's dark. Sorry, guys. I know it's early in the morning. And that's only like 20 coats. Yeah. Um, that's an ugly M&M. That's an ugly M&M. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like your normal M&M. Um, because it's slightly m mutated. Not mutated. <laughs> Sorry. I'm pretty sure it's just like two peanuts. It is. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> these, um, these are lead M&Ms. Um, that's dark. It's not really that funny. Um, in some ways, it can be. Uh, but I think this is kind of interesting to think about, like, an invisible ugly. The things that, like... <laughs> I just want to say diabetes is not the only problem. Yeah. Yeah. Overconsumption of, like, snacks and, and treats and things that we kind of just, like, you know, put into our bodies and aren't aware of because it's there and it's ready and it's, you know, it, it's convenient. You, there, there's corner stores everywhere. You can pick that up. Yeah, and who's making sure that your M&Ms aren't made out of lead? Yeah, yeah. Somebody, hopefully. But no, like, as, when, you're, when you're thinking about, like, all these different forms of ugly, the, the invisible one's kind of scary because then you just think about all the stuff that's really, really heinous or that's behind closed doors or well, not. Well, the invisible ones, too, are the scary ones because you can't, they don't look like anything. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Social ills are ugly, but you only ever see them manifest. You don't see, there is no thing, right? I, I'm sorry. Gender stereotypes yeah. can get ugly. Right. And I mean, this is like, this is kind of an example of like some weird extreme fetish mentality uh, and or you know what it is that we're actually this has actually, happened at Dufala family Thanksgiving yeah it, but, but also this is what in a way what we're actually doing to our food um, on a large scale not giving them like Pamela Anderson esque uh, torsos um, but um, I, yeah, it's probably not real potatoes no 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 but um, in the marketplace no it's not but uh, this is pretty gross, and um, I kind of, I kind of want to walk you through it just a little bit, just because it's, it's um, it, the, the drawing doesn't actually get you. Do you want to do you want to switch? So yeah, maybe, um, maybe, and like I, you know, don't close your eyes and like peek at it every once in a while if you want. Um, but it's it is kind of it's kind of it's like some weird like field medic type stuff. South Beach butcher. Anyway, sorry. Um, so you take like a, a fresh chicken. And uh, you loosen up the skin around the neck and separate the skin from the, the, the breast meat. And then you take two potatoes and you carve out the back of it to get the curvature of the rib cage. Um, you slide them in where you separated the, uh, the, the skin from the breast meat. And then you skew it to the actual bird. And you slice a carrot and you poke out the little tiny middle part of the carrot. And you slip that down over the potato. And um, a cranberry, if, it, and and then you take a cranberry and drop it in where you poked out the center of the carrot. Uh, put it in a tinfoil bikini and put it into your oven. Um, and on it, on another, on, on another, and you can put the tinfoil over it to get that bronze, like tan, uh, tan line. Take it off. You do normally how you do it. Do you baste it a little bit and then you pull it out and it has a tan line. It is absolutely terrifying um but it's still delicious uh there, <laughs> speaking of, of here's another anecdotal uh what are you looking at me <laughs> sorry man i'm just going for it so yeah one time i was doing this at at, at, at my uh at my house and um 
And, uh, and there, the, I didn't realize that the bird was frozen. There's a fr and I had everything out. I had like, you know, Playboys in the, in the cabinets in the kitchen so the center folds were like hanging out. And um, all like the tools, I had already carved like maybe like eight or nine potatoes because I hadn't gotten it right. And I was like trying to get it right. Like knives and everything all over the place. And I was the only person at home. And I was like, damn, this bird is frozen. Um, so I'm going to run down to the, to, to the market and get a fresh bird. And meanwhile, we had a house guest coming in who had a key that was left under the mat at the front door. And she had no idea. And she walked in. It was like, anybody home? And walked into the kitchen and saw that and just did not know what. I mean, she was like, she has a sense of humor, but was pretty mortified. But yeah, that was, <laughs> we could switch again. That was pretty, uh, pretty ugly. Um, so this. <laughs> you want to say something, Steve? This is a 20 second sculpture. This, yeah, it was. I'm going to let that hang for just a second and then explain that it's not what you're thinking. Um, now you explain how it gets Oh, it just in, it's like Duchampian kind of like ready-made. Um, no, I mean, really, this was take the thermos, take the thing. Yeah, yeah. Done. It, Sculpture. Right. Yeah. Um, this, I mean, a lot of what this is is not funny and not at all do we condone um, uh, Violence towards women. Sex toys and, and thermoses. And, and it's really like this is more about like the ind industry that capitalizes on the objectification of women and like how messed up that is and how perverse that can be and to the extreme well, limits that that goes, like what that is. And then there's a, a company like Fleshlight, because that's what this is called, in case any, any of you didn't know, um, that they spent all this time like making this thing that goes into this canister when they could have just dropped it in a Stanley thermos and been done with it perfect disguise you know and that's what it is it's like hiding it it's like the whole concept is being able to like conceal the 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 sex toy so um i just imagine somebody on a job site <laughs> with this in their truck and someone who saw like a buddy who ran out of coffee <laughs> and goes to jimmy's truck Oh, no. To get some, I left coffee. my coffee in your truck. It's so bad. Um, <laughs> but okay, so it, that leads to really strange things um, that are really kind of twisted. And dear God, what? Where? Where are we? Where are we headed? With the something? internet is an amazing place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and I just want to point out that on this picture of Yoda, there's a plastic sleeve. I think that's the ugly, that, no, that's not the ugliest part about this, but it's one of the It's things. one of the many ugly things about this picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this happens. God, oh, um, And just, if anybody took a picture of that, please, no, like, don't hashtag to follow brothers. That's not. On that, like, <laughs> that's somebody else. Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, right? It's uh, trickier than you think. Yeah, technically you can't wear Peddling. pants. <laughs> yeah, you can't smash up and ride at the same time. So. Yeah. Um, Tough stuff. Uh, we, 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 this is actually old work. Um, this is one of the first bigger projects we did together. Um, and despite the poop part of this, there's a, this was one of our first big experiences making a whole project out of trash. Yeah. Because we found all these toilets. There's a, a whole bunch of them. We had a race. <laughs> In Old City. And they were all found. Yep. Um, and mostly cleaned. And mostly cleaned. But th this was fun. This was like, a, like the first time we actually uh, engaged with like our community and had like, all, like our friends. And it was uh, originally the, the, all the riders were supposed to be varied demographics and like people from all all corners of like started out really ambitious really ambitious um it wound up being a bunch of our friends from different professions <laughs> so, <laughs> um but um it, this is uh, this is a good example of of um where some of the, like a lot of the work we we do now does uh focus on trash and waste and and things like that 
And it's not necessarily, it didn't originally, we didn't originally land there because we're like, oh, we should be thinking more about the environment and we should be thinking about these things. I mean, for Stephen, probably more so, but for me, I arrived at it more uh, economics. It was like, it was free stuff on the street. And instead of buying a toilet for 200 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's, I just like tell all my friends to holler when you see a toilet on the street. Um, <laughs> and I mean, it really, it only took about maybe like a month to get 15 toilets off the side of the And that, that allowed us to spend the money we did have on the unicycles that make the front of them. Yeah. But then again, even like the bikes, like... But the, it was a budget the, issue. Working with trash is, was definitely started as a budget yeah. issue. And, and, not and, a sustainability issue. So yeah, but like, and, and like just to make that point, it's like something that other people kind of turn a blind eye to and like don't want to pay attention to or it's easier for them to not pay attention to it. Um, it's, it's potential. It's actually, yeah, else. it's no thing. Um, Go grab a toilet on the street. No I'm really trying to say the, not say the, whatever. Um, so one man's garbage is another man's whatever, the whatever, forget about it, that's stupid. Um, so yeah, trash. Um, that, uh, one of the things that, that, I mean, that was a budget issue, but it also happened to be part of our practice and a lot of the work that we were making, whether it was a, a need for a big piece of wood, like you find a truss in a dumpster or something like that, rather a truss being like a big piece of wood that came out of a building that was being torn down, instead of going to like, you know, the, the, the wood guy and buying a really expensive new piece of wood. It was just, it really was an opportunity. Um, and that, that kind of stayed present in, in like the work that we'd make. Just oh, because. you start to figure out like, I saw a dumpster on whatever block. Yeah, and that way you're doing it forever. Yeah, I mean, you just look. I mean, the, any place, like a city is great because they're always rebuilding everything all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, all that stuff goes somewhere. Um, and this is where it goes. Not all of it, but uh, there's like your municipal trash waste that goes to waste management and stuff like that. And then you have this other thing that's your construction and demolition waste. Um, and manufacturing waste to some part, which is a whole other part of the trash uh, world that, like, for the most part, by design, is not visible to normal folks. I mean, you the see the dumps of demo waste. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We all know what cans and bottles and stuff are, but like, this is like, that is a whole lot of potentially dimensional lumber in my mind. I look at that and I'm like, that's not just a truck dumping a bunch of. Uh, it's a taken apart house. Yeah. Um, so right. this is this is a picture from. Uh, a, cons a recycling center in the Northeast called Revolution Recovery, which um, we became friends with the owners years back. Um, and they thought that I was like, a crazy artist guy, and they're like, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you, whatever. And I just kept They couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this, this is eventually. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Eventually, a, a relationship was formed with the owners of this recycling center, um, and the idea of uh, of this as a resource in an artistic and creative way uh, was something that the owners were willing to entertain. They informally like sourced materials for like furniture makers <coughs> on the side, but that was when they first started, and their business model is kind of aces, so they, their business was growing like very rapidly. And the idea to be able to like facilitate those informal transactions with like a, a carpenter or a sculptor were just not, they, they didn't have the time for it. Even though that they, they knew that they wanted to because it was perfectly good stuff that somebody could use, they didn't have the time. Um, so our, our interest in that kind of turned into this idea of trying to work there as artists, which inevitably led to the co-founding of uh, Recycled Artists in Residency, which is rare, which now I, I'm there most of the time. And this, as a resource, feeds back into Defala Brothers sculptures and installations and the work that we do about. We kind of we were the guinea pigs to try to figure out how to make that real, like how to be in an active dump and get materials not get in the way, not impede anything that actually has to happen there. It's a working business. Um, and how to navigate that. So now it's at the point where it's open 
through application to other artists. And like a lot of those tricky early questions, we just like stumbled through mm -hmm. to figure them out. Yeah, and then I basically just like made a tent there and lived there for you know three years or something. Um, so yeah, but, so some so of what yeah. happens at Rare. Yeah, yeah. So with dumps, basically, they, what they do is they um, they they co they push everything together and mince it up into this big stew and then feed it onto a sort line where everybody sorts the materials individually into uh, into like rigid plastic, rubble, dimensional lumber, wood. Um, out of the 350 tons of material that comes through this place every day, 80% of it is diverted from landfill, which is kind of amazing. Um, if you're not in that realm of the waste world and, and that kind of, it's, it's awesome. What they do is, is really rad. Um, Think of everything except for like <laughs> the very end of the garbage on your block being recycled. Yeah. Um, so that's a picture on the bottom. That's a picture of, uh, of Revolution Recovery. And that's, um, that's the Delaware. That's the Delaware. And it happens. That's a super fun site. So happens to be totally encapsulated by uh, the, the old Metal Bank site, um, which is still like kind of under lockdown by the, the EPA. Um, and, but it's like it's supposedly it's been remediated and they have like the covers under the soil. They've done removed everything, put concrete cap in the warehouse. That's, you can kind of see that other warehouse. That, Big one in the back is not Revolution Recovery. That's probably going to get torn down when they start developing that site. Um, but that circle is is a, that uh, shop indicating that shop, which we have on location. So at this point, we are able to bring artists in, and we have an open call. Like at, we're in our second year now. We just chose our artists for this year. Um, to come in and use this as an opportunity to mine for ideas and, and the creative endeavor in this context, which is totally awesome. And at the same time, still feeding back into Dufala Brothers um, and Will for as long as... As long as one of us is there. I yeah. Um, this, is, this is an example of, of, a, of an earlier piece that was like, again, it's, if you think about it in, a, in, a, in like the boring way, which is like numbers... Um, you would never convince me to buy this stuff to right, make this. Because right? if you bought this stuff, it would be like, you know, at least $15,000 or $20,000. And I can think of 20,000 better ways to spend money than to buy HVAC yeah. that I'm not going to use, right? right? Like, <laughs> but this winds up being, you know, uh, a comment about like uh, the the controlled uh, environment, and um, and if you if you the specific work, yeah, yeah, the specific work. Yeah. Um, what a beautiful world it would be. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, with that, with having access to that, you are able to think bigger. Um, you can stretch the limits a little bit and you can be a little bit more ambitious depending on what the scope and scale of the work might be. Well, you can also go out on a limb a little bit because it's the trash. You don't really know what's going to come through. Um, so there's also that part, yeah. which is that's kind of my favorite part is the like you have to work on the fly and you can't know what it's going to look like. When you start, you can only kind of guesstimate and work towards something. But you're at the mercy of the waste stream, and like if you don't get a curve, you either make one or there's no curve. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is not. This is part of a, uh, the installation at Globe Dye Works for part of Hidden City uh, Festival in 2013. Yeah, is that an ugly face? I'm trying to remember something. Um, it, this is and speaking of that, like being able to think freely and like open up and experiment. This is an, art, an artist who came in very early in the program um, when we were still just after me and Stephen had been there for a long time, and we were informally inviting other folks in to like do whatever you want with whatever you have access to. Um, and this was kind of amazing for her to uh, to open up that big. We kind of gridded out the yard and like hung the whole thing and had it had all the lines from these sails go back and and. Uh, terminate on, on a forklift, so you jam the forks really high up in the air and the whole back end would go like that and it would create this big, huge, undulating, should have showed video, sorry. Um, this is uh, part of <laughs> Shredfest, this was another project that, was, that happened at, uh, at Rare, um, where we basically had a, a festival of uh, waste music as an idea, where the, <laughs> the, the stage was built out of shredded metal Really, it was baled aluminum. But the idea was it was 64 tons of, uh, of metal, and we invited people for a day-long, audience-less uh, festival to come up and perform and shred. We had some serious shredders. This dude can shred. The guy in, who's playing the drums is great. Um, and and this, is, this is just something that we started doing more recently, which is 
taking those canisters that are the, the, the dumpsters that are on the street and painting them, um, having them pop out. So at this point, it's like it's kind of just like they're kind did of we put, ugly. Did we put one or two. I think I just put just one. one. Yeah. You'll sometimes see these. I did one. I get to see it every once in a while at a site behind a little fence. Mm -hmm. And people are like, "What is that?" And it really made it. To a certain degree, we've seen a, a, a certain amount of people who are just like, "Who did that to the dumpster?" I'm, no, I'm used to seeing it this other way, and now there's like this design on it, or there's, you know, we did ten of them um, with and invited other artists to come in and do it. It was a, it was a lot of fun, and I think we're gonna do. I think we're doing more. Great. I think we're doing more. Depends on the money, because actually we don't find the paint that we paint these dumpsters in the trash. Sorry. Next. <laughs> more trash. This is a, uh, this bird is filled with plastic. Yeah, that's dark. Um, that's, that's ugly. Um, but I guess this is going to like, you know, the, 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 the global, like this image is just to think about. Well, that's it, the like, thing about rare, rare um, and our experience through that when you're used to running around the city and jumping in individual dumpsters, it's like the, the, the scale of the problem isn't visible, really. Like the level of waste that we produce isn't obvious. But after you spend a, some time at a place like Revolution Recovery and you see the tonnage and you, you get a much better idea that this is actually a massive, massive problem. And everybody like, looking at numbers and everything can, can, can kind of imagine that it is. Everybody knows that. Um, but when you see it, it's, it, it's different. It, like, it shakes your soul a little bit. It makes you kind of be like, oh my god, a little bit scared. Um, because it's so right. it's all like the way a out to like the, the Pacific garbage yeah. patch and et cetera. That's where that bird is from. That's from uh, Midway, which is Chris Jordan. Yep. He's the photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and all these birds, albatross, go and eat plastic and try to feed their chicks plastic, and they all just eat plastic. So this is this the, the example of a mother, a mother bird feeding their baby bird what they were hoping was fish, um, but feeding it over and over again and stuffing it full of plastic until the baby bird died. Um, so yeah, it's not like it doesn't exist just because it's invisible to some people. Um, it's, it's, and it's part of that like disposable... Uh, disposable culture that yeah. kind of it feeds into it. And this is what most people eat out of most of the time. <laughs> eh, a, a lot. lot. Uh, way too many. Yeah. Because this stuff doesn't ever go away. This is a house for one person. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I think he plays it. I'm going to guess football player. I think so. Um, and no, no. And this is a house for no people. Yeah. Um, and a store. And that's a house for one ant. <laughs> Who's died? Has died. Um, and this is like kind of like the alienation idea of like he does not have, or he or she, that ant, does not have the support of the ant colony. It's the individual ant, ant farm, efficiency ant farm. <laughs> um, and. Um, <laughs> The resources of the community really aren't there for that ant. There's no community. No, there it's not for there. That ant. Um, that was yeah. I, I guess that that was like I, we were trying what, to figure out how to set up. Like, well, the, we're trying to get to this idea that with that level of waste and and such a what I would want to call a lazy use of resources <laughs> available. Um, what happens at the edges, the far edges of that, where abstractions happen? Like we made this really long shoe that's about the abstractions of the far edges of weird marketing and what's special there. But that happens in cities, too, where resources don't make it to the edges of the community. And um, I mean, most rough neighborhoods don't look like anything except prime development to a lot of people. And that says nothing of the people that are actually there. That's the bad opportunity. That's yeah. like, that's where, yeah. But that's what happens. So this is was a huge project uh, that took most of the last year and a half for us uh, on exactly this. Yeah, which is like, you know, instead of it just being all the material 
uh, things in in our lives. This is like the homes and the housing stock, which also is like made so much more uh, has it. When you're standing in the middle of a construction and demolition waste stream, it, it has a, a lot more impact. Um, when you think about things like this being torn down all the time, for when we were saying like you know, ugly can be potential. This would be a potentially bad potential depending on who it's potential for. Um, but being, one, one more time, I just riffed that one, so I can't. Okay. I'm sorry. Does anybody get that? That kind of made sense, right? A little bit, right? Um, so I guess we should probably talk a little bit more from the beginning of it. So About this project. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. About this project. <laughs> Do you want me to Yeah, go for it. Go okay. for it. This is a project we did with Temple Contemporary called uh, Funeral for a Home. Also funded by the Pew. A message from our sponsors. Um, where basically the, the goal was how do you bring, what was Rob's original mission? How do you bring attention to uh, blight? Mm -hmm. Was that what it was? Yeah. And, and the, the, basically, the, what is of value here? This is a building that's been slated for demolition. It's been inhabited by squatters. The neighbor, Mr. Stokes, he, he wants it torn down. He's in that, um, that it's, house. It's an attraction for like, you know, drug activity and people. Like, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a bad scene, um, but there is, and I guess this is kind of like part of like the whole like idea about ugly is if you look at the surface of something and it's ugly, look a little closer maybe and investigate a little more and there's probably more to it. Um, and this project really was a great example of like cracking open what some people might just think is an abandoned home and pass it by because they, they you know, it's like you see a lot of this in, in Philadelphia. Um, and in a lot of major cities across our country. So it's like taking this and opening it up and looking at it a lot deeper. And what we had to do in order to, me and Steven were uh, responsible for designing uh, the a funeral for this home. Yeah. Um, As it was going to come down, that was the project. Uh, so this is Mantua uh, in Philly. And we worked out of a studio on 41st in Haverford for. 10, Ten plus years. It's kind of on the edge of Mantua. Before we did this project, the last time I rode my bike through Mantua, I got punched in the face. Just for so intersection. I didn't spend a lot of time in Mantua proper. After that, I would take a different way <laughs> to the studio. You would go down um, Spring Garden. So it was a little bit crazy to be like back in the middle of this neighborhood uh, and actually getting to meet the people. And the thing that no one would ever know is the level of infrastructure and organization going on in Mantua that, that actually makes it the place that it is for everybody who lives there. Um, so a lot of doing this project was about finding the real robust and um, committed and invested people in this neighborhood that we're already that, that could use a project like this to give voice to their own agenda, concerns right? and, and, and like make make clear um, some of the issues they were facing and, and give voice to them, which is basically like one of the biggest things are the resources not available to that community and the encroaching development of University of Pennsylvania or I say Drexel University and how that's gentrifying that neighborhood and twisting things up for those folks who've been there for a really long time. Um, so we were invited to make this m memorial, and the way we had to do it is by getting in and meeting everybody and hanging out. We went to church on a regular basis because um, Pastor Moore from Mount Olive Baptist Church, which is like literally like right around the block, um, kind of gave me a challenge because I was like, we have to have, if we're doing this, there has to be the choir, there has to be the service, there has to be that component. Even before that, we knew that we had to <clears throat> talk to folks in the neighborhood to figure out what kind of a funeral was appropriate. Right. Um, so he's like, hey, man. If you want to talk to my musical director, you got to come to church. So I started going to church. I wound up actually playing with the band, which was so dang awkward. Because I mean, like, I'm a musician and everything, but like, you're in a, you're in, you're in a Baptist church, and you're like, I'm going to play my flute. Oh, hey, what happened? So anyway. You took too long. I took too long. Um, so there is the idea of capturing this oral history in this neighborhood and, and archiving that in the, in the urban archives. This is something that, like, 
if somebody doesn't do that, there's, there's, it already exists in part, but doing a more comprehensive survey of that and trying to gather that before that neighborhood completely changes because of the encroaching development. That was, that was basically our cover, not cover, but I, it was like, that was part of the project that made it possible to engage because it is important. It is like the identity of these folks and wh where they've been and where they might be going. And it's crazy because Mantua is incredibly strong and proud and has uh, their motto is plan or be planned for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're assertive about it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like, and again, it'd be hard to know looking from the outside. I mean, like, I grew up with a lot of what you heard about bad happening in Philly, like we're from South Jersey. So as a kid, a lot of what happened, you would hear Mantua a lot. And that was my association, um, even being right next to it. And you would just never know how hard everybody there is working to reverse that conception of the place. So um, after like, you know, lots and lots and lots of conversations and meeting people and we, we got to um, designing this funeral, which basically was making a dumpster coffin right there with the, the flowers on the end and, um, and putting the flowers over the home and actually have a full-blown memorial surface that um, Mount Olive was, Pastor Moore from Mount Olive Church was, uh, he eulogized. And their choir were the, were, was, the what was the choir for the church, for the, for the service um, and with their band. Um, and um, a lot of people came out. And it was really, really nerve-wracking because it seems like a good idea to a certain degree to do this. And like you can qualify that and all the work that you put into it actually will like, it will amount to something. But at the end of like all that work and we're like about to open this up and it's a Saturday morning and you're a little nervous, the only way this is going to work is if the community comes out. And they did. And that well, was it's not just that. Once they're out, being part of it. if they think it was okay, you know, that's a whole other nerve-wracking bit too. Um, so basically, we had the service. There was a procession with um, unique miracles and uh, extreme creations. There are two drum lines and step teams, um, and they walked the entire uh, the, uh, the the mourners from the memorial location, from the site of the memorial uh, uh, service, down the block and to the, basically to a block, like three blocks away, that was, they followed the and dumpster coffin. Yeah, I'm sorry. Show the picture. And this was where, uh, it was um, Play on Philly performed Amazing Grace in five part harmony. Got a little bit of tear in my eye. Could not help it, a lot of people were crying. Um, and this is where the dumpster full of the initial, the excavator going into the building and taking out that initial little bit, that left to hit the highway and go to the recycling center. Um, and, and it was the turned, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And then we turned right. So in lieu of a burial, we marched back to the block and, and uh, we uh, had we, a huge meal for everybody. The repass. And this was where I took a breath for the first time in the whole day. Because at this meal was when I kind of knew consensus would be made about how the day went. Um, and it was positive. So I got to breathe again after And that really, point. this is where every, I think a lot of people got to breathe. Because um, it was really, it was, it was, it was, the, the nieces of the woman who bought the house in 1943 was a single mom and raised her only son in that house from 1943. They were speakers in it. Um, other members of the community, um, the head of the Mantua Civic Association spoke, and they were very, very powerful speeches. Um, and I think everybody was very much on edge and just like trying to hold it back. And this is when it kind of just like all just settled. And there was a DJ and everybody jammed out, danced to a lot of Michael Jackson. But and, they're all uh, Mantua folks, and most of the people sitting at the tables are folks from the neighborhood. And the intermingled with people from not in the neighborhood. Well, yeah, like and that was and that was awesome. That was, and everybody there was a lot of joy yeah. on the the whole thing. And then after everything got cleaned up, the rest of the house got demoed, and that's what it looks like today. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it will become homes again. Yeah. And we just uh, uh, 
Temple Contemporary, I should say, and Patrick, who is the historian and Pat, uh, the project manager on the project, we all got together and planted a bunch of tulips uh, at the end of the fall because Mantua has this thing about planting tulips. So that whole site will be a big uh, a, a plot full of tulips. Um, and then it'll be housing and yeah. affordable housing. Affordable housing so that so that folks in the neighborhood can stay in the neighborhood if they want to. So, but um, I guess that's kind of the end of our thing. If there's um, one big thing about ugly. Uh, just to wrap it up, it's never what you thought it was. And this is like, the house came down, it was sad, there was a funeral. That is the reality in blighted neighborhoods. Um, but setting up for something useful and new growth is also yeah. part of that too. So there's always an, uh, another side to it. And yeah, there's... I'll go back yeah. to revolutionary recovery? Or? Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right.